I have had a slightly unique journey. Everybody is unique in, in, in every which way. But um, yeah, I grew up in Pakistan, went to study in the US, uh, became a CPA or, or Chartered Accountant, realized that wasn't for me. I came back to Pakistan, became an entrepreneur, failed. Right, failed, but I tried hard. Was, those ideas were great. It was young, you know, entrepreneurship is not easy. There was no support system around it. And then I went to work for one of the greatest startups in Pakistan, a company called Mobilink. Right, it was before it was called Mobilink. Right, and I was one of the team which started that company. And it was a great journey to build a very successful, one of the most successful. It is the most successful company in the history of Pakistan. Right, it is the largest private sector company in Pakistan. And uh, and we built it very quickly, right? It was a great experience, and I then felt I needed to do more, and I went to business school in Europe. I went to INSEAD, mm -hmm. which is uh, very yeah, it's a Stop great life. business school. I learned more, got even more excited. At the time, the whole dot com revolution was happening. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, got funding to start a small company. We won the European Business Plan competition. Mm -hmm. Got money to start a company, but then would dot com bust mm -hmm. So I then went to the Silicon Valley. Because I said Silicon Valley is a place where entrepreneurship really has taken root and is changing the world. And I went and became a venture capitalist. I worked for Intel Capital, and Intel Capital is a very uh, you know large largest corporate venture capital firm in the world. Right, so I worked with them in, in Silicon Valley. I did many investments, uh, learned a lot, um, and then while I was doing that, I also got inspired by another idea which, which has changed my life. Right, is meditation. I learned something called the art of living. Right, it's a program through breathing exercise you're able to quiet in the mind. It changed my life so much that I decided to pack up and come back to Pakistan and become a teacher. For one year, I was a teacher teaching people how to meditate. And I still am. I continue, but then I, while I was teaching, I, my old boss, now who had come back, and I started Mobilink, he had now come back as a CEO. He took me on and I helped grow Mobilink from that time a very small company, 2 million customers, something like that, to now what it became 32 million. I became the chief strategy officer. I helped to grow it. I then built the broadband business within it. Great opportunity because those, that era was an era of great growth, right? The whole uh, the, the 2000 uh, time frame. Until 2008, you know, when th the elections happened, things slowed down, uh, the global recession happened. Uh, I then transitioned, I, be I became the CEO of Athen, mm -hmm. I uh, which is a turnaround situation, the company which was about to go because of the mm -hmm. excessive debt that they had taken. Uh, great fundamental business, but they overextended. So I had to really scale that back. I restructured the company from a hugely loss-making company, right, in terms of cash flow. Mm -hmm. I made it ca cash flow positive, stabilized mm -hmm. the company. And uh, in 2000 and uh, mid-2014, mid mm -hmm. I decided to move on. I really believe that innovation, I would try to start up a venture capital fund. Mm -hmm. I feel entrepreneurship will be the big driver for change, right? Because these young people, the new ideas are going to change the world. Every industry mm -hmm. is going to go through a disruption. Technology is going to be radically, from healthcare to education to agriculture, everything is about to change massively. Mm -hmm. We saw in telecom, right? What was not, what was uh, uh, good for the only the rich and you know powerful, mm -hmm. it became that even the the poorest of the poor could afford it, and technology enabled that, right? Mm -hmm. And that infrastructure will be now be used mm -hmm. to ch transform the lives of millions of people. So I really felt Pakistan needed that. While I was trying to think about how to do it, I came across Acumen, and I was all I knew about Acumen for many years. But I would have loved about it, and especially the founder Jacqueline Novogratz, mm -hmm. who really inspired me, was this idea that patient capital, right, and innovation. When you can solve the problems of the poor. I am very, like I said, I teach meditation. Mm -hmm. When you teach meditation, you only will learn one thing. You learn about the oneness of humanity. You learn that everyone is yours. They belong to you. Mm -hmm. And I felt really touched. I wanted to make a difference in the lives of the of mm -hmm. the poor. And this idea I've been now been a part of for the last year. Mm -hmm. And Acumen has been in Pakistan for the last 10 years. Uh, now we're trying to grow it to the next level. You know, get more capital to entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. who are bringing innovation and finding solutions that can change the lives of the poor, whether in education, healthcare, agriculture, energy, 
Revolutions are going to happen in all these areas. You know, all of us who grew up in Pakistan are touched by the sense of mysticism. Our culture has great depth and beauty. Mm. Our religion, Islam, is one of the most beautiful religions in the world. It teaches people about peace, mm. even though the message and narrative has been changed. Mm. So most of us have a very strong DNA and spiritual DNA. Um, this desire to really find, seek the truth. But when I was in Silicon Valley, and again the dot-com bust happened, it was a very stressful time. In that stressful find, I wasn't feeling well uh, because of stress. Stress was getting to me because you know, chasing the world, it, and, and you know, you, you you get caught up in it, it. It takes a toll on you. And when it, when it took a toll on me, I I, I I took this class, the art of living course, which was a simple class. I just learned breathing exercises, which switched off my mind, right, and quieted my body down to be able to hear my heart or what you call my, your spirit. In the silence, you really hear yourself. You're able to hear your spirit. And I did, and I, oh, it was beautiful. And, and you know, that beauty is what has, uh, I decided that I want to live a life which is connected to that. I want to be true to that. And I decided to become a teacher of it. And I said, this is technology. It's really technology to be able to access that. Now, because I, I'm a venture capitalist, I, I like the idea that technology can solve the problems. And I saw this as a technology that could change you know, hu human psychology to be able to switch off. Because we can't, our mind is normally, normally always working. This mind is what causes our trouble, our suffering. Mind and ego. Two things, yeah. right? Ego is really the the the, the, the real yeah. uh, perpetual. Yeah. But uh, so I felt it was uh, some. It changed my life so much. My health improved because when you relax, your body relaxes, your mind relaxes. Because in that in that breathing exercise, what happens is you let go of a lot of stress. Yeah. When you see that light in within yourself, the, the light that you are, you realize that you know happiness and joy is not outside; it's within you. And you need to, you know, the external. If you get caught up in the external world, you may lose sight of that, right? So I decided to follow through, and I came back to Pakistan. And like I said, I became a teacher of it uh, for one year, and I still continue practice. I teach it, still teach it, because I really feel it's it's important. I think there's a revolution happening anyway in spirituality, in all our cultures, in Islam, in in the wider world. Because I think people are realizing that this materialism, and the, not it's not materialism per se. It's this greed that has now taken over. Commercialism, where only commercialism. What is it? When I get a new car or nicer car, will I feel good? But your nature is happiness. So you don't need anything to be happy. You have to be, tr you can find happiness by being true to yourself, by being learning to know that you and everyone else is belongs to you, by right, that you loving everyone. That is happiness. So I started, and this has become my key. Even business, I believe there's a new value system that's coming in. Businesses that in, imbibe this kind of value are going to treat the customers differently. They're not going to treat, I'm selling something to someone and I don't care what it is, as long as I can make money off it. You'll, your products and services should improve the lives of people. It should change their lives. And that's why I love Acumen, because Acumen really believes in this philosophy. Companies, they build products and services that serve the customers to improve their lives, to empower them, to give them choice, right, that they didn't have before. Human's model is very interesting, right? Like I said, we invest in three things, in companies, people and ideas. Companies I mentioned, innovative companies, right, that not that are finding innovations to somehow bring, make services, right, or enablement accessible for the poor, right, like education, okay, all those things I mentioned, where they are, where the, we don't believe in charity, we believe charity is required, but we believe that they should be, build models that are sustainable and scalable as well. 
so that we can, because the need is so large, for example, education, find a solution that becomes affordable for the poorest of the poor. And it can be, that they can access it, right, very easily. And then millions, because we can't, educating 10 people is not the game. It's 10 million, Pakistan, 20 million kids are out of school. How do we get them to the, the so we're looking for companies like that. Same time, also the other things, we invest in people. People, and we do it through our fellowship program, where we take every year in Pakistan 20 amazing social impact leaders, right? Be, be, be young, young people could be anywhere between 25 to 45 average age range. People who have a passion, right? A vision for social change in Pakistan. Who are starting, who are entrepreneurs or working in, in large organizations also, but who have a vision to bring about a difference in that. So we, by giving them a fellowship, they get not only training and enablement to become very successful leaders, but they get a community. Because one man alone is very difficult to do something. But when you have many people with you, a community, you feel that you are not alone and you, it gives you confidence. There's an old African power, which I love. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Right? It's as simple as that. So when you have community around you, you can go much further. You will have the stamina, the, you know, each people will encourage you and there will be good days and bad days. And you need a community which understands you, which has a similar aspiration. And we're creating that community which has the values, right? Where they want to bring, bring our equality for all humanity, which is again the mission of Islam, mm -hmm. right? Dignity for every individual. Every human being has a right to live a dignified life. And this doesn't matter whether he is Hindu, Muslim, every human being has a right to dignity, right? right. And th that's the vision that we, those kind of leaders that we're looking for. All over Pakistan. And rural, you know, rural is where, if you look at where poverty is in Pakistan, yeah, two, you know, 40% of Pakistan's population is under the poverty line, right? Which is really, really, really scary, right? Which is, and 80% of Pakistan's population is really actually poor. 80% of your country is poor, right? We don't understand sitting in, in, in the big cities, you know, in our nice homes, we don't realize how much poverty there is and what it means to be poor. What it means that, you know, you living, maybe, maybe, for example, you may not be poverty, you may be living a decent, you know, earning enough income to pay for everything. But if you fall sick here in Pakistan, right, you can't go to work for a couple of months or something happens to you, right, there's no security net. The family will be completely, or someday you get fired. Just there's very little, you know, space. It and it is very they're vulnerable in very so many ways, and uh, it's very difficult to to build a nation. We need to include all of them. We need to empower them, and we need to make sure that they become, you know, are able to live a dignified life. You know, I, okay, I'll tell you my philosophy on this. My philosophy is that the, the, the elites of most countries, including Pakistan, are self-serving. They will not let go, or like any business, if a business is a monopoly, they're not going to let, you know, reduce the prices. They will stay a monopoly. Only when competition comes to them, right, will they change their behavior. And therefore, we are trying to enable leaders and new alternatives that will challenge the status quo, right? Through innovation, through new ways of being able to serve. For example, in education, right? Technology will change uh, the way, you know, how education is delivered. Where maybe somebody can learn to read and write through a mobile phone, right? Maybe he can learn vocational skills. Maybe he can learn even to be, uh, to do so many other things, right? Through it. And now uh, the technology is amazing that you don't even have to read and write. You can speak to machines now, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, in, uh, you haven't even seen the beginning of that curve is now about to happen. It will transform everything. What we believe is that they will put pressure on the whole system. Already, for example, communication revolution has put pressure on the political system. People talk to each other. Now nobody is uninformed, right? The media, mass media has transformed, right? The whole landscape. Tell you the communication has transformed. Internet has transformed. It is not going to change. It has put pressure 
on the political leaders or or elites not only political is the whole are the elites to open up they cannot misbehave there's this you know there's a, a level of accountability so we believe that innovation will will actually is challenge the status quo and we believe that's the way the change will happen and uh, nobody gives away you know uh, like no monopoly will give away their 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 profits right unless they're fo- forced into it and i think only the social impact leaders and social in, you know innovators will do it the people again you know at large revolutions happen but they happen very infrequently this is a rev- this time the revolution is a revolution of entrepreneurship entrepreneurs are coming up entrepreneurs are solving problems that have that one possible it's a new knowledge economy yeah, right absolutely. new entrepreneurial economy the big companies that have a big time, a difficult time you know large corporations they will have a very difficult time competing as these new small limbal you know companies every man i know people sitting in chichavatni who are building businesses that are competing with people in the us right mm-hmm. why not why can't they mm-hmm. and this is a global challenge i think even the west is going to be challenged by it biggest challenge is that It's just taking too long. The biggest challenge for eliminating poverty is that it's hard changing behavior, right? What has happened? The poor have been conditioned to believe that they are not empowered, right? We have to, as leaders, as people, need to change people's psychology to start believing in themselves. Once they start believing in themselves, once they realize how powerful they are. you will have a revolution on your hand what we are doing through acumen or what i'm doing through my art of living is actually doing the same empowering acumen is creating models leaders to show that it's possible to do things differently right creating models that others can follow they'll get the confidence they will change right they, they just need the confidence and we will have a uh, we don't need a revolution we will have change happen any which way I have many case studies. Uh, we were great success. Uh, one of the most successful ones has been a company called Ansar Management Company, which does low-cost housing. And this entrepreneur, a Pakistani of uh, from the US, uh, who wanted, who was Acumen Fellow also, came back. He wanted to make a difference. So he worked with Khuda Ki Basti and understood how the model works. And he took that model and started a new company called Ansar Management Company. Uh, his name is Jawad. and very jawad aslam he built this company it took him 10 years to build it but he built what he did was he built communities right where first of all you buy a big piece of land instead of just selling real estate he made sure that whoever buys it has to build there so there is real people living there it's not for speculation he built for example mosques right which was for all communities shia sunni everybody had to pray in the same one right and find ways to be able to work together and he created a community institution where people really work together the old way it used to be right where, where communities neighbors you know each other and they found that oh my god people actually value that it's been a slow process this entrepreneur believed in it he now created a role model we've actually sold our shares in that company two big investors were coming from the uk who will put more money in multiply because they're saying this is a beautiful model of change so new ideas are now starting to take off new ways of being why why does it have to be this way right why does it have to be real estate for or uh, accommodation for for big you know dhas and barriers it can be for the poorest poor poor and they can live a life of dignity they are willing because they know how to be a good neighbor they know how to be good civic keep the streets clean but you got to work with them and make them trust each other and he's done it for example other one is farmajid which is clean water right mm-hmm. for rup- one and a half rupees a liter you get clean water available right so and they delivered on kimchi uh, and very successful model we start scaling up and not having clean water 
has huge implications on health, right? People don't even count. Not in diarrhea, but there is, for example, in Lahore, the water is arsenic, right? Very important. So, just by getting clean, clean, high quality water, you ch ch improve the lives. And people, the, even the poor want, they know, they know how to value their health, right? One day's worth work is worth a lot of money to them. But they, they can't afford 20 rupees a litre, but they can afford one and a half rupees. So companies like that, which is now making it affordable for the poorest of the poor to have access to clean water as well. Um, we have companies like National Rural Support Program where we set up a bank with them, starting to lend to 100, you know, already we lend money, to, we've got 250,000 farmers who borrow money from us, right? To be able to improve the agricultural yields, to improve, to buy livestock, and that is bringing about a revolution in terms of enabling farmers. Right? So there are many. These are three stories. There are many other amazing stories. There is Nasra Public School, which is bringing low-cost schooling, high-quality low-cost schooling to the poor. Right? It's scaling up, good model, good training. There's so much demand that before the school is there, they get filled up. Right? Affordable fees. So that, but quality. Parents want quality for even the poor want quality, right? Then uh, we, one of the most interesting one is Nizam Energy. Nizam Energy is coming with something called pay as you go solar power. Very interesting. See, you know, 35% so, uh, of Pakistan's population is outside the grid. You know, there's no electric wire passing through there. 35%. Instead of getting them a wire, it costs a thousand dollars to connect a home. If they have to be big, you know, cables to be laid out. Here they sell them a solar solution with a solar panel, two fans, three lights, and they were multiple combination with fans, lights, how many lights, and they these people cannot afford to pay for it, so they charge them a monthly rent, right? Thousand rupees a month, they get two fans and three lights. They used to spend about eight hundred fifty rupees a month on kerosene. They no longer have to pay it 50 rupees for kerosene. Pakistan, <laughs> 50 degree heat. If you have a fan, it can change your life. So entrepreneurs are finding solutions, right? For the poorest of the poor. And these are the kind of success stories that you have on board. And there are many more, right? You know, we can take a lot of time. You know, I have only one message. Right now in Pakistan, we are looking for entrepreneurs, right? Because most of us are very spirited. We really believe in making a difference. We want our society to be better. We are all good people. Most of us feel disempowered, feel we can't do anything about it. Some of us have very good ideas and we feel that oh, those ideas cannot be implemented. I say trust yourself. Go out there. The world needs you. Then you can be happy any which way. But what you'll be measured by in this life? is the impact that you have on other people. How much, how much better have you made this world for others? Take a risk. Money is available, capital is available. You've got innovation, you've got good ideas. Take a risk. There are now a lot of institutions which support you, incubators, seed funds, and people like Ackerman who we are looking for innovators and entrepreneurs who can solve the problems of our people, right? Especially the poor. So, my message is, believe in yourself more, have confidence. Many of you have great ideas, great capacity, but you are underutilized. We are a nation which doesn't do enough. You know what happened because of colonization? We stopped believing in ourselves. We, any time we were told that we were not good enough, right? Know that you're good enough, you're the best of the best. If you see, the same Pakistani goes out and he does so well. He's appreciated by, you know, by the, the world appreciates the Pakistani, you know, where a talent. Anyway, USA, Silicon Valley, to, you know, Japan, they're everywhere. Um, so, believe in yourself. Just make it happen and go out there, take initiative. Have the faith in it, take risk. Have faith in your creator that there's a greater plan. If you've been called to do something, just do it because you have a greater destiny. God says that if you, you know, you, man can, I think the saying, I forget exactly what it says, man can aspire, right? If, God, if a man makes an intention, God, if, if it's good intentions, it's a pure intention, 
even God will come to, to enable him, right? And that is something that you need to believe. This is how your belief is tested. So I wish you good luck. And if you need, if you've got a great idea and you're ready for funding, right, please come to us. Thank you.